Hi, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. My name is Matt and I'm with Creative 8 and today I'm showing you the CMY color space uh, within Photoshop, but I'm not going to show you anything with Photoshop. I'm just going to talk to you about the CMY color space, what it is, how it works, and when you would want to use it. So to start off, CMY color space, you want to know first off is that it is used for printing. And why is it used for printing? Because if you look at a piece of paper, because if you think about it, you're printing on stuff, right? You're looking at a piece of paper that's white. How do you get uh, yellow when white is the background? Because we know that white is the uh, result of all colors uh, being displayed at once, right? You get white with all the colors put together. You get that, that, that makes white. So how do you get yellow to show up on something that already has yellow? Uh, well, I think it's... I think, hey, that means you have to remove some of the colors, right? So your CMY color space is a subtractive color space, whereas RGB is an additive light space, meaning you're you're starting from a, a blank black screen, right? And you need to add color, so you're going to add light to it. You're going to emanate light. So that's where uh, that differs from your RGB is that CMYK, you're starting with a white piece of document paper you're printing on, and you need to produce colors on that. And the only way to do it is to remove light. So your pigments subtract light from each other. So to get yellow, you're going to um, remove, I think, blue. Yeah, you're going to remove blue. To get cyan, you're going to remove red. To get red, you're going to remove uh, cyan. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, I hope, yeah. I, that could not be 100% accurate, but you're going to remove light. So when you... Uh, when you're designing stuff, you this is a good little tip. The more color that you have here uh, put in, being put down on the paper, it's going to be a little darker. And that's a good point to bring up that CMY color space does not have as many colors as the RGB color space. You're limited to the color uh, options available. Uh, right now, you're looking at a red here on the screen, right? But if I open up an RGB document... That, that red is very bright, isn't it? Whereas it's very, very dull here. But you also have to keep in mind that uh, the screen that you're viewing on is in an RGB color space, so it's going to naturally look brighter, right? If I were to send this to print, these colors would actually come out pretty bright. When you got them in your hand, you would say, oh, these are bright. And if you were to compare a CMY color space profile or image to a RGB color space you're going to notice on the screen it's not going to just oh, excuse me display as bright uh, but i would trust that this red here would come out printed bright and i would trust that this cyan would come out printed bright and same with the magenta and same with this yellow um i'm trying to think what else um another thing to keep in mind just talking about the cmy color space is your blending modes when you are designing something in the cmy color space uh sometimes don't operate as what you would think they would and some of them don't even work so there are times i know that when i'm designing or creating graphics in photoshop i have to work in an rgb doc color space knowing i am going to print it i have to work in that color space though to achieve uh, certain looks and uh, effects in an image and just have to work with having to convert that down and knowing that i'm going to lose uh, a portion of the colors and just have to deal with it um, when you are working with blacks, your blacks are going to be a little different and especially if you are going to design something in say Photoshop or Illustrator with uh, and, uh, going with the idea that you're going to take it to print, uh, your blacks are not going to look the same because the K value in CMYK is where your black ink comes from. But if you were just to say that, uh, if you were to think that this was your black color, you'd be wrong because when you were to print this, it would come out looking black, but it would come out really more looking like a dark gray. So if, if you were to have wanted to achieve your vibrant look, your your contrast, you're going to have what's called a rich black. And your rich black is specifically used for print. You're not going to have a rich black in RGB. Your rich black in, in uh, print is a combination of your K value being at 100 typically. I don't, I've never seen it not at 100. And then your CMYK values being... Uh, I've seen anywhere from 20 to 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 50 percent. Uh, you don't go to 100 because if you're going to print a document with 100 percent ink, 
uh, value being put on, put on the paper, you run the chance of oversaturating the paper and ink bleeding all over it, and it'll come out looking horrible. I've had that happen before, and I've seen it happen, and it you'll notice it, and it'll destroy your print. So you want to be aware of that, and you need to keep in mind whoever you're printing from. Uh, you want to check with them to say what your check with them to see what is your rich black settings. And I know with my company we use thirty. I think it's 30 and 30 and 30 uh, for for our settings. Uh, I will sometimes, I will use, uh, or we can do 50, 50, or, you know, uh, an ink value. When you're not producing a really dark image, you may have just, say, a little strip of black here, right? And using 50, 50, 50 works just fine. But uh, I know it's uh, 30, 30, 30 uh, for... Uh, the company with Creative 8, we do 30, 30, 30, and that's just to save foam uh, ink overflowing and, you know, creating a mess. So, um, yeah, I hope that gives you an idea of how the CMYK palette works, why it operates the way it does. Uh, just to show you a few more things, your channels over here within Photoshop, uh, this is how your colors are displayed by showing you, you know, what what's being applied down. It is backwards, I've noticed, right? Whereas in your RGB document, right, it's more like, hey, emanate light where it's wherever white is, it's going to show red. And it's the opposite in here, wherever there's black, um, there's cyan being applied. And I don't know if that has to do with the, uh, the fact that CMYK is a subtractive color space. And maybe they're trying to represent that. I don't know what, what it was or if it's a, I'm not sure why they decided to do that, but that's, that's, uh, how Photoshop works with CMYK, and I would just uh, remember your CMYK is only going to be used for print, and even then, you could still work in your, within your RGB and convert over if you're not doing anything too fancy. Um, besides that, I hope you learned a lot about the CMYK color space, how it works and operates, and uh, please share and subscribe and ha ask me some questions. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks.